Alright guys, welcome to another video. This video is just going to be about painting these brake calipers for the E55 ASL because, well, the suspension on that car is still going to take a while, so I thought meanwhile I'll give you guys this video. Also to give you guys some other good news, so thanks to VRP I got my hands on an AEM Infinity 508. It's a standalone ECU. I was planning to install this ECU in the car way later, like after I got everything working, but um, thanks to VRP they gave me a pretty good deal on this one, so I thought I might as well get it right now and um, try to figure out how much more of the electronics I can get rid of. VRP, if you don't already know they're a tuner for Mercedes so they have a lot of mods for the E55 like pulleys, cooling kits, um, all those things also for the C63 and other Mercedes models. So if you haven't checked them already I'll link their website in the description below. You can definitely go check them out and expect the video on this thing in probably the next uh, month or two about um, installing this ECU and um, getting it running. I'll mention it more in the next video but for now let's get back to the brake calipers. So going over the story of these calipers, they were originally silver, but um, what happened after the first track day was that the silver color got really discolored, it turned all brown and it started chipping off from a few places, so I had to paint these calipers. Um, I painted them yellow, but now even the yellow paint is pretty burnt off and everything, so it's time to give them a paint again. So I asked you guys in the previous video what color you wanted to see these calipers painted, and I guess most of you wanted to see these calipers painted black. And I guess, yeah, that would have been the most practical option, like to hide all the brake dust and everything. But after considering how black would look like on this car, I don't think it would suit the look of this car too well. So I decided to go with the second most liked comment, which was to paint the calipers red and go with the lettering ASL on it instead of AMG. Um, so I've printed out this template for ASL. I'm going to be printing this on it in white and then the rest of the caliper is going to be red. And this time I'm also going with high temperature paint. So this paint is actually meant for engines, not just brake calipers. So hopefully it should be um, better for like um, lasting a bit longer this time. So my plan for painting these calipers is that first I'm going to be sending the whole caliper down, trying to get rid of like all this paint that's um, already on it and also these chips and everything. And um, once hopefully I'm down to the aluminum, I'm going to be first um, putting a primer on it. And once the primer is done, then I'm going to be putting a white paint on it for the letters. And then after that, I'm going to be putting the red paint on it and then giving everything a clear coat. So I started off by cleaning the brake caliper just to get rid of all the brake dust and everything that was on this caliper. For this I just used a scotch red pad and some WD-40 and um, later I used a wire brush with um, plastic bristles. Don't use the one with metal bristles because it can damage the rubber that's around your pistons. But yeah, I didn't work too hard at it with the cleaning because I was going to be sanding this caliper down later anyways. If you want to watch a good video on cleaning the calipers, I remember Alex uh, from Legit Street Cards, if you know that channel, he posted a pretty good video on restoring his calipers. I'll try to find that one. If I can find that, I'll link it in the description. That's actually a much better way of restoring these calipers back to their factory condition, but since my calipers were way too far gone to um, restore them back to the factory condition, I think painting is definitely the better or easier option for me. Once the caliper was fairly clean, next I started off with sanding the caliper. I started off with an 80 grit sandpaper, trying to remove the paint as much as I could. I still couldn't remove all the paint because it just took a lot of effort removing this paint. And after the 80 grit sandpaper, I moved to a 220 grit sandpaper for the final sanding. So now I'm done with pretty much sanding uh, most of this yellow paint and also the silver paint off. At least all the places where there were imperfections of um, sanded it down all the way till the aluminum but I still haven't been able to get rid of all of it because it's really difficult sanding this paint down so I'm just gonna leave the rest of it on here. So now the next step is to paint the calipers again. I'm gonna give it a quick wipe with some acetone one final time and then after that I'm gonna apply the primer. I have masked some of the places where I don't want the paint to go but um, I was also planning to mask these pistons but it's really difficult to put masking tape on it because the tape doesn't really stick to the surface. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm just gonna paint the whole thing and then I'm just gonna sand these down again so the paint comes off from the surface of the pistons. So yeah, after that I just wiped the whole caliper down with some acetone and after that I sprayed the primer. This was zinc chromate primer by the way. It's good for being used as an adhesion promoter so like it actually helps the paint stick to the bare aluminum. Once the primer was slightly dry, I painted the front side of these calipers. I painted this white. This was just for the letters so that the letters, the ASL, on the front of the calipers can be white and then the rest of the calipers can be red. Now the front side of these calipers is painted and I've given it about two hours to dry. So it's not completely dry right now, but it's dry enough that I can touch it and hopefully I can apply these letters without peeling off the paint. Uh, so my plan for applying these letters is that I'm going to put some masking tape on it first and then I'm going to stick these letters on it using some glue. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to cut all the rest of this paper off so I'm only left with the letters.
After waiting about 10 minutes for the paint to dry, I started peeling off these letters. The trick with this one is that you can't let the paint dry too much because if it dries too much, the paint will start chipping off when you're trying to take these letters off. So you have to take them off when the paint is still slightly wet. And once all that was done, it was finally time to give the caliper the final clear coat. Here's a final look at the brake calipers after everything is done. I think they've turned out a bit too shiny for my taste, but other than that, everything is pretty good. I did screw up on the letters on um, these front calipers just a little bit, so like um, I think I removed the letters when the paint were still too wet, which is why they look a little weird, but the rear ones turned out amazing. The rear calipers look even better than the front ones. I think I, um, I guess I took a bit more time doing these ones, that's why it turned out a lot better. Also telling you guys a bit about these brake calipers, so some of you might already know that these brake calipers are made by Brembo, usually they put the AMG logo at the front, but if you look at the back, um, these are actually Brembo calipers, Mercedes, most of their high-end cars usually use Brembo calipers, and the front ones are 8 piston caliper, and the rear ones are 4 piston caliper. And the cool thing about the front calipers is that there's actually 4 individual pads that go into these calipers, and if you look at the pistons themselves, the pistons are off different sizes too, so there's a smaller piston and there's a bigger piston. The point of this is that, well, you Usually what happens in cars is that let's say um, your rotor is spinning this way and when your pad presses on the rotor, um, especially under harsh braking when you're driving around the track or something, it usually causes uneven wear on that pad. So the rotor actually pulls the pad in one direction which um, causes the pad to always get worn from like one side and less from the other side. So what these pistons of different sizes do is that the bigger piston applies a bigger force on the pad on this side and the smaller piston applies a lesser force so it, it counters that uneven wear that the moving rotor would usually cause and the pads therefore wear out evenly even under harsh braking. And that's something I've actually seen work because every time I've replaced the pads on these calipers they've always like they're always worn out perfectly even whereas usually if you take a car to the track and like under harsh braking I'm al I've always seen that the pads always wear out unevenly like one side of the pad gets worn more than the other so that's actually pretty cool. Also another point worth noting for these calipers is that they actually have two places to bleed the caliper and when you initially install them like after like let's say right now the caliper is completely dry and I install it back in the car I would have to bleed both of these points to get all the air out of the caliper because there's no connection on the top like this side of the caliper is not connected to this side of the caliper the only thing that connects it is actually this tube at the bottom which connects this side and this side of the caliper most high performance calipers would be made this way um, but yeah that's something to keep in mind when you're bleeding these calipers but yeah, now the brake calipers are definitely ready for the ASL, but the ASL is still not ready for the brake calipers. So the next video coming up is going to be about making the front suspension for the ASL, so hopefully these brake calipers, at least the front ones, can go on. Um, but that is going to take a while, because the thing is that it is a bit of a complex suspension, and I did a few design changes, like um, at first I was planning to use the coilovers from the E55, but later I decided to go with different ones. Um, so I was recalculating everything, remeasuring the sizes and um, changing the design around a bit, which is a good idea to do it at this point rather than thinking about it later. I'll possibly divide the next video into different parts, um, just so that I can get it uploaded earlier because the whole front suspension is probably going to take me a while to make. Uh, but yeah, this is everything for now. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.